The subject of today's video is Bacillus anthracis. Bacillus anthracis is a deadly bacterium whose spores are used by some as a bioweapon. It's deadly because it causes anthrax, which is an endemic zoonosis in many countries. Zoonosis refers to a disease that is transmitted to humans from animals. Now let's talk a bit about its properties. Bacillus anthracis is a non-motile facultative anaerobic soil bacterium that is spore-forming, rod-shaped, and gram-positive. It is the size of 3 to 5 micrometers long and around 1 to 1.2 micrometers wide. Hence it can easily travel down to the alveoli. But what's its genetic material? Bacillus anthracis's DNA is in the form of a singular circular structure. It also has two plasmids, PXO1 and PXO2. These plasmids carry its virulent factors on them. For now, let's talk about the incubation period. We're going to use Davidson as the reference for this. Cutaneous anthrax usually takes around 9 hours to 2 weeks, whereas inhalation anthrax takes about 2 days. There are three types of anthrax the bacteria causes, cutaneous anthrax, inhalational anthrax, and gastrointestinal anthrax. Let's go over the transmission and the life cycle. This pathogen is usually found on animals and animal products. Goats, sheep, horses, cows, rats, all of that. The pathogen in these animals transmits usually from the orofecal route. Spores are shed in the feces of these animals. Animals that have died while carrying the disease can have lingering anthrax spores as well. It is important to recognize that animal hide, wool, and hair can have the pathogen on them. In the US, the drums and rugs made from goat leather from Haiti could have this pathogen on them. Humans get infected when handling these animal products, especially in the leather tannery industry. The route of entry can often be through skin infection, mucous membrane infection, or inhalation into the airways. No. Heroin users can accidentally inject its spores via needles, and human-to-human -human transmission has never been reported. Now let's get back to its virulence factors. As mentioned earlier, Bacillus anthracis has two plasmids. These plasmids contain the genes for its virulence factors. PXO2 encodes the genes for the capsule. Bacillus anthracis has a unique capsule that is made of proteins, poly D gamma glutamic acid. This protein capsule helps the pathogen avoid phagocytosis. Hence, this capsule is an important virulence factor for Bacillus anthracis. Other virulence factors are the edema factor, the lethal factor, and the protective agent. These factors are present on plasmid PXO1. We've mentioned the spores a lot, so let's talk about them. Bacillus anthracis can form spores. A bacillus anthracis loses its fluid and develops a hard coat around itself. This is called a spore. This spore is then engulfed by another bacillus anthracis. When the outer pathogen dies, then the spore comes out. These spores can survive for decades in a harsh environment. They can resist heat, drying, and ultraviolet rays. When spores enter a host by ingesting, contact, or through aerosolized dust, they then germinate. Normally, 37 degrees centigrade, CO2 concentration, and serum proteins are helpful for a spore to germinate and become an active pathogen. Like we mentioned before, spores can be used as a bioweapon. In the US after 9-11, a number of envelopes with anthrax spores were sent. These acts of terrorism caused 11 cases of cutaneous anthrax, 9 cases of pulmonary anthrax with 4 deaths, and 2 cases of inhalational anthrax, both of which did not survive. Let's continue on to its pathogenesis, and let's start with its immune escape. Once the pathogen is phagocytized by the dendritic cells or macrophages, it starts its efforts to escape. Dendritic cells are usually able to kill this pathogen. However, macrophages sometimes cannot. In such cases, the acidification of the phagosome activates the pathogen. As macrophages enter and circulate in the bloodstream and tissues, 
the pathogen gets many opportunities to cause infection as it escapes from the macrophage. Let's talk about the disease a bit. Anthrax causes gelatinous edema, congestion, and in most cases, leading to tissue death and necrosis. The Mechanisms of Edema and Shock Bacillus anthracis produces edema factor. This factor is an adenolite cyclase enzyme. It will create more cyclic AMP from ATP. This results in production of transendothelial macroapertures. These holes in the cells cause the fluids from the blood vessels to spill into the tissue, causing edema. If this pathology becomes severe, then lack of fluids in the vessels will result in shock and death. Cyclic AMP also severely imbalances the intracellular signaling pathways, which in turn impairs macrophage function, leading to the pathogen evading the immune system. Note, Dendritic cells can continue to kill the pathogen, while some macrophages fail. Now let's move on to the mechanism of tissue necrosis. The lethal factor is to blame, as it is a zinc-dependent endoprotease. It causes N-terminal snipping of the mitogen-activated protein kinase kinases. This snipping inhibits kinases, causing activation of the alternate pathways, which in turn initiates apoptosis, resulting in macrophage destruction. Finally, we will talk about the role of the protective antigen. The protective antigen is a common cell binding component that helps the lethal factor and edema factor to translocate to a cell's cytoplasm. The protective antigen must bind with a cell receptor or a protein complex to attach to a host cell surface. We previously thought that just one receptor was known, with this receptor being called Tumor Endothelial Marker 8, or TAM8. This receptor was later renamed to Anthrax Toxin Receptor, or ATR. Researchers have found an additional few receptors and protein complexes that bind the protective antigen and help internalize it. The protective antigen forms a membrane-spanning pore on the cell membrane. Without the formation of the pore from the protective antigen, anthrax pathogenesis cannot occur. Once the protective antigen is bound to the cell surface receptor, then the edema factor and the lethal factor bind with it as well. This complex is then endocytosed. Once this complex is inside the cell, the acidification of the endosome allows the lethal factor and edema factor to unfold and exit the endosome through tiny pores. Remember those specific anthrax types we talked about earlier? Let's give them some more detail. Starting with cutaneous anthrax. Skin is the most common route of entry and infection for Bacillus anthracis. It also multiplies rapidly, and while doing so, it releases potent exotoxins that we discussed earlier that cause localized tissue necrosis. A single irritable papule on an edematous base is observed first. With further progression, a painless rounded black lesion surrounded by a rim of edema is observed. It is called a malignant pustule. It is called malignant because in the absence of treatment with penicillin, the pathogen will continue to infect and grow, leading to death. Spontaneous resolution occurs in 80-90% to 90 of the cases. In other cases, severe skin edema, shock, and death will occur. Remember, skin anthrax is part of the differential diagnosis for ulcers in travelers. gastrointestinal anthrax. It is observed in patients that may have ingested contaminated or undercooked meat. The cecal infection causes nausea, vomiting, fever, and anorexia. Two to three days after severe abdominal pain, anorexia will occur. Toxemia leading to death can occur soon after. Okay, but how do we manage it? For prophylaxis, administer ciprofloxacin, 500 mg, twice daily for two months for high-risk individuals. You may also need to add three doses of anthrax vaccine. Vaccination. Animal and human vaccines are available and can help prevent infection in high-risk situations. The vaccine is called anthrax vaccine adsorbed, AVA. 
It is the only FDA-approved vaccine in the U.S. Skin anthrax, culture for anthrax, get penicillin susceptibility. Until then, administer ciprofloxacin, 500 mg twice daily. If susceptibility is confirmed, then change to IV benzyl penicillin, 2.4 grams, six times daily for 10 days, or phenoxymethyl penicillin, 500 to 1,000 mg four times daily for 10 days. Additional aminoglycosides may improve the outcome. Spore eradication. Consider possible inhalational anthrax. Administer two months course of ciprofloxacin, 500 mg twice daily, or doxycycline, 100 mg twice daily, orally to eradicate the spores. Inhalational anthrax. Inhalational anthrax is treated with ciprofloxacin and clindamycin for 14 days. In addition to this, the spore eradication therapy previously mentioned should be administered as well. 